by diplomacybriefing.com www.diplomacybriefing.com where you can get all your internet content on the web i've got the regular diplomats superstition stitches cedric audacious hand with his wonderful pronunciations and we are here to see what happens in the fall of 1905 as we officially reach the midway point of the game will pez survive is the big question as austria Will there be an IT? Can England hang on to his lead? What's going to happen? I've barely looked at the map, but I know it's out there. So you're going to get this sort of cold. But before we begin, hey, Superstition, hey, Hand, how are you guys doing tonight? Doing good. Yeah, I'm doing all right. Hand right. from my second house. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Uh, we are. I'm looking at this cold, but what I can see is Arrivederci, Pez de Mer. Had he moved to Tyrol, had he moved to Bohemia, yep. Tyrol, he'd be in Munich. Do you think he actually was trying to get Munich, or he's doing a courtesy bounce with Germany? Because it looked like a courtesy bounce. Yeah. It did, yeah, it did look like courtesy bounce. Honestly, the thing about Pez is a, is a really great player and, and maybe we can do a little retrospective on him. But one thing I've noticed, you know, some players some players just go down swinging and some don't. And the thing about Pez is, we, we talked about this last episode, he doesn't have the stomach for groveling, for, you know, desperate uh, measures, uh, for he doesn't, I don't think, enjoy like the moral license that... Uh, that, that being close to death gives you. Um, I These past few turns, it just doesn't seem like he's really, it doesn't, see, it seems like he lost his will to live, in my opinion. Um, you know, there's all sorts of desperate measures he could have taken, which he didn't. It just seems like he was plugging in some gunboat moves and waiting to die. So yeah. I got uh, multiple text messages today on Discord from uh, Mad Max, who plays Italy. He's very upset at my criticism. <laughs> Max Vax. Uh, yeah, Max Vax. I call him Mad Max. And uh, he's Fat <laughs> Max now. But Mad Max is very upset at me uh, and saying, I don't understand anything. Uh, he, and he's like, have you ever played with Pez? He goes, stitches and hand are telling you. Okay, have you ever played with the man? And I was like, I played with him once, and he, you know, he he did really well. That's how he made it to the finals through me, uh, helping him as his janissary. So I, I don't want to well, do as long as you do what he says. Like he's happy. We're gonna save that for the interview of Pez, which we'll do <laughs> sometime soon. But what is it about Pez? playing with Pez in the beginning that makes him difficult to work with. He just, uh, for me, he put out very plainly how it's going to be with no frills, no anything. He's just like Western triple. That's all it's going to happen. And <laughs> it's just, it was so blunt. And it's like, this is the idea. This is what we're doing. And even if you wanted that, you would think that you would, I don't know, sell it. And it just feels so, I guess, clinical. And yeah, it, it's, it feels like he's in charge the entire time, uh, even if you feel like it's supposed to be a partnership. So it's, it's just rough in, in a way. <laughs> I mean, Doesn't work with me. I find myself following, you know, my experience in the season three finals with him was, uh, was, was a rough one. Uh, <laughs> I'll have to send you my final words with him at the end of season three finals. It was kind of a funny exchange. Um, you know, I was begging him for help. We were both going to die. And instead he told me to choose, uh, choose, choose the way in which I wanted to be executed. Um, and I think my final words to him was you are a narcissist. And then I didn't talk to him for a year. Uh, I will say though, I find myself slipping into that old resentment. The last time I played with them, I had a much better experience. Um, 
I think there, there's an element that is a bit hard to understand. My real, you know, I'm going to be honest, my biggest complaint with Pez is that he just targets me every time I play with him. <laughs> he immediately, he's someone, he always will try to eliminate the player that he thinks is best or that he feels threatened by. Um, Isn't that a compliment? I. It's very annoying, uh, especially when he, like, it goes wrong and then he tries to get you back on side like nothing happened. Um, or, and, you know, and he really, really relentlessly acts like he has the moral high grounds is this other problem. Like, he'll target you and try to murder you and then, mm-hmm. and then acts like you are some criminal for not going along with him. Um, but it is true he he he's not he's not great at uh he's not a he's not a very cooperative player he he is someone he he really will always side with the most pliant people on the board um and then like we've talked about the entire his whole way of using group dynamics to try to make you feel isolated um is not always the most pleasant experience, but I think he he is slowly catching on to some of the social sides of the game. Uh, but you know, a lot of good players are pretty unpleasant to play with, to be frank. Uh, but but yeah, Pez can be very grating. Um, can you look at one of the orders? What, what is Vienna doing? Vienna's convoy or something? Yeah. Yeah, well, he said he wanted to give himself a crown. So that lady that says that the previous uh, winner has fallen. So <laughs> this is a little cherry on his narcissism. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's something hey. that Stitch, uh, Stitch has put it well when he kind of, there's almost this, Pez, there's this, I would say it's, it's he has a patri- he's a very, he has this kind of patriarchal way of talking to you. He, he, the way he talks to you, it seems it, it seems like you're talking to your father who doesn't respect a single thing you've ever done in your life. Um, and it, <laughs> you're it, a failure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, oh, do you know, it right next time. Like, I knew you would never amount to anything. Uh, and it is true, you know, <laughs> you did you did put it well that he has kind of moved on to a grandfatherly, you know, he is not completely there, but as he started to move on to a more grandfatherly persona, it's become a little bit more charming. Um, you know, I remember in my last game with him, he told me a great story about a uh, uh, grandfather chameleon. Uh, but uh, we'll let him tell that story maybe during his, during his interview. I, I wonder if that um, with him. attitude He's quite the yeah. history buff. I've discussed World War One and World War Two Italian battles. Uh, the man knows his history. I wonder if that attitude actually entices some players. Is that why he does so well to get so far? Because he seems to just piss off finalists. Yeah, I mean, my last game, like he did, we we built uh, much more of a rapport talking about pre-Socratic Greek philosophy. Um, but in the end, he sends me these long monologues and I'll send him, him a very beautiful, carefully worded repost. And my sense is always that he's just waiting for his turn to talk. <laughs> he's not really that interested in what you have to say or, or what your thoughts are. Um, you know, I, I came very close to wanting to work with them the last time I played with them in the sense that even though you know, I'm someone who, if I'm, I, I would just, I'm really not a targeter. I actually don't believe in targeting, I, which is just my own way of playing. I think I don't like to overdetermine what I'm doing. Others are different. Some, I'm, not, I would, I would describe myself as a counter targeter. So that's where me and Pez always come to blows. If someone, if I find that someone's targeting me, I will do absolutely everything to isolate them and eliminate them immediately. And in fact, make it clear to the board that they are targeting. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's, he, he can be very difficult. Um, I understand what Max is telling you. I'm also very amused that Max is now sending you angry private messages. That sounds terrifying. Uh, yeah, well, Philip was too. And I was telling him it's dangerous to try and meta the commentators. 
<laughs> I, I, I just don't that. answer them. I'm not so jealous. <laughs> then he got offended when I said that. He's like, "Am I not allowed to send a message? Am I? Are you saying I'm, I'm like say what you want? Caveat emptor." I'm actually in DC, and I swear I saw Philip at the Atlantic Bar right near the mall today, but it might have been some other guy with the same same style in a Hawaiian shirt. I'm not sure. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the game here. The big. I'm going to eat crow in front of the diplomats. I yelled. Oh, I got angry. I was frustrated, <laughs> upset, hurt feelings about the ineptitude of the East. The East has eliminated one player. And given what's happening with Riaz's stab, they've got time. I was wrong. You are wrong. You, you just weren't anticipating that stab, which was technically a year earlier, but Germany pulled that off. That's great. What you really weren't, even with the stab, if what you, you weren't anticipating the stab, and then what we really weren't anticipating, because if England had followed through, the East would still need to be mobilizing against him, is that England would completely self-destruct. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and wave a build and just yeah yeah probably one of the most fatal i can, can you guys think of a more fatal mistake in in any nexus finals oh yeah uh, i mean outside of my mistake outside of opening my outside of opening my, stuff my 1908 mistake helping power was uh brutal it cost me the game oh uh, i had a party in miss builds <laughs> Oh, you missed the build by accident? Oh, right. <laughs> oh, that is pretty awful. Which led to the quickest England takeout ever. Yeah, yeah. that was a yeah, that was that was grace. grace. You know, I will say, much earlier in the game, in my finals, I had a point where I could have come to my senses and... Uh, you know, I, I was manipulated on a very deep level by someone who knew what I was going through, but there was a point where I had two fleets as Austria and Germany and Pez, who I actually should have listened to at that point, uh, had agreed to let me take both East Eastern Med and the Ionian as Austria with my fleets, and I could have blocked uh, Russia's entry into Budapest and Vienna, and instead I went along with Russia and got stabbed brutally, which was, but that's much earlier in the game. And I had not a great chance of winning at that point. This is, but even your, Ed, do you really think you could have won if you hadn't made that mistake? I was second. I, I had the tiebreaker on everybody. That could be, that could be worse. You might have the worst. Congrats, right? Riaz has not surpassed you. But I think you might have been brainwashed by Humble a little uh, bit too. But this well, time. no, I think Humble is right. But like I, I did a what I think is a complete unassailable justification of my move. But maybe now I don't believe it. I don't like those words. Humble is right, but we can move on. All right, fine. We lost Keith, but he'll. I still just stitches he'll be back he's back uh all right i switched the wi-fi because that's low. the big yeah. question the big yeah. question i didn't have a chance of winning but i stole max's win pretty much the big question in the east is what's going to happen next i'm not sure russia likes the fact that italy put an army into trieste clearly knew he was losing trieste uh, but that's not great news for Russia. Mm -hmm. Russia had a good turn here. But and Turkey had a good turn, but it Why definitely it looks like the Kraken is coming. Yeah, Russia is not Russia just a good the turn. Ionian. I, I really think that the Kraken has a good shot. I wish Ankara would have held or something. <laughs> that's Yeah, that was terrible. Why on earth did he cover Constantinople? You need to build a fleet in Khan. 
Yep. And it's not just because of an overdetermined strategy, but just because a fleet and con would allow you to respond to any diplomatic situation that arises here. In um, either direction, yep. I think you know, was... And now you can build a fleet that it telegraphs what you want to do. What, you know, if you build a if you could build a fleet in Constantinople, you have your options open and you have because you can go either direction, you have both sides kind of cool. Um and I don't and I don't see the logic of moving Constantinople at all, unless he's trying to take Greece. Um, uh, I, I, I think the logic is this. I have two reasons why he did it. I like the move. Uh, one is I'm almost certain it was negotiated with Russia in advance. You've got to move to Khan or I'm going to build a fleet in Sev or something like that. That danger still exists, but Turkey's playing a dangerous, but ultimately I think good game because both Russia and Italy are making a bet that Turkey is with them. Turkey can take Greece. Turkey Turkey can well, do lots of things, but will he build a fleet in Ankara? That's the big question. I would think that... I'd say that with the lack of fleet in general, that's very anti-Russian. The lack of fleet? Yes. Well, I mean, if he... I mean, he can still Greece, but... Is he really? I mean, he has to build a fleet, right? Is he going to give up the Black Sea again? Uh, I mean, this is I, the move. How, how can you defend the move Constantinople? I just don't understand because... Russia asked him to do it, because, is what I'm willing to bet, in exchange for not building a fleet it, set. And he's telling Russia he's with him. We don't know if he is or isn't. So I've never played with Ewok, which I've mentioned a million times times and remember last time we were talking about the tape on the wall like belgium isn't worth it for instance and i think another one would be you can say no to ewok <laughs> i mean it's it's okay you don't have to get you, I, I don't know how he does it i don't know how he does it um maybe it's just being so cuddly uh but it's just i mean you could you, you can make such a justification even that Let's say you were trying to justify leaving Khan open to Russia. You could say, look, I'll move against Italy. I don't want to telegraph what I'm doing. It's, he has more fleets than me. It's a huge strategic liability. Why, I, I, you know, you're, if you're asking me to attack Italy and you want me to build in Smyrna, you're basically wanting me to attack Italy and ensuring that I cannot <laughs> advance against him. I must build in Constantinople. You know, I have my own interests just <laughs> separately <laughs> from those of little fuzzy Ewoks. Uh, well, what, yeah, because he's got to telegraph his fleet build. Uh, I, I, yeah, I don't think he wants to telegraph, but how is this against Turkey? First of all, he can move against Italy if he wants. Greece is assured if he wants to go that route. Mm -hmm. And if he builds the fleet in Ankara, he puts Russia to the test. Keep Black or keep Romania? But he could have built a fleet in Constantinople and then taken Russia by surprise, whereas here, if he builds a fleet in Ankara, then Russia knows that he, he's going into the black and just ever you never want to build a fleet in Ankara being a building a fleet in Ankara is terrible it yeah. just you have an entire wasted move to get it out uh, and you could always pivot to Armenia or Smyrna if you wanted to go either way from Ankara with that army yeah not everything to Turkey Italy. did was very if good got, if he's got a kraken it's not threatening to Italy it's just what Italy wants to see But on the other hand, kind of is going to build a it's fleet, just right? Things flew in another season and getting dumped. I disagree. It is threatening to Italy in the sense that it seems like if it kind of would make me suspect that he is trying to take Greece and wants to backfill the army into. Well, I, if I was actually. <laughs> I don't know. It's a it's a puzzling move, and like as we've noticed, this game puzzling moves always kind of uh, 
ring the alarm bells a little bit. But I don't. I think I think Turkey did very well. I actually really liked that he helped Italy into Trieste, which allowed them to do the arranged balance in the Ionian, um, and also shows a certain distrust of Russia, right? Because they needed the triple support in case Russia supported Trieste. Uh, but I think the move on Kara to Constantinople. To my mind, is 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 simply uh, simply a waste. Yep. If, if you're going anti Italy, what's wrong with a fleet Smyrna? Smyrna moves to Aegean unimpeded, takes Greece, takes no, Ionia at the end of 06. Turkey's it's Turkey's they can support an Ionian now. Uh, Italy you, will have to because disband. Italy is gonna. Italy could lose. Yeah, the it still be an Ionian. You can accept them out. It, Italy could Italy go down. Has too. way more fleets than. You. Yes, that's why. Italy has more fleets. You do not want to right now. You do not want to be in a naval contest with Italy right now. Italy, look, look at the board. Italy has done very well. It, look how much the reverse situation. The fleets are slowly emptying out of the Mediterranean. And moving towards it, it, he was almost reversing the situation. Um, he's almost reversing the situation. He, he's really achieving hegemony of the Mediterranean. Uh, and also, not only that, but Russia is on top now. So maybe you should think about limiting them rather than your equally small partner to the West. Now, I hear you, but I, I'm saying. It would be a dangerous um, RTS. It is an, there. But if you tell me your turkey with six, it would be. A... Look, if you're turkey, it's a dangerous RT in terms of Russia is dangerous. It's not a dangerous RT in terms of it's a great RT for Russia because Italy is strong, has a lot of fleets. Turkey will get nowhere and Russia will win. So that's that's not a great position for Turkey. Um, Turkey needs to they need to uh, become more of an equal player here. Um, but they've done well in the sense that they've kind of uh, cultivated a balanced power. They've they're helping Italy a little bit more now. It's kind of impressive that they managed to completely dismember Austria before it arose. I mean. Just a testament against to, to Pez's uh, difficult nature that no one wanted even a one a one army Pez as janissary. That's that's impressive. Frenemies. Yeah. All right. Italy had a good turn here. I think we all agree. Very good. The question mm -hmm. is what Italy Very builds. Good. Very good. I, I think it has to be a fleet Naples. But I can I can make an argument for an army yep. Rome, but I think a fleet Naples has got to be it. I th it could be, or if he really wants Turkey on side, it could be a fleet in Rome too. That would telegraph a certain hostility to France, but France isn't in too much of a position to turn around. Um, I mean, he could, right? He he definitely is a good diplomat. Um, if Italy and Turkey are going together, I can definitely see an army Rome where he's going to try to make that faux German southern front. Yeah. Let Turkey take on the bulk of Russia. So. Yeah, okay. Uh, I, I, would oh, because I'm a, I would be targeting Iberia. I think that it's going to be very hard to expand into the Balkans and into the artist formerly known as Pez. Um, Russia, despite, you know, Russia has enough up there to defend very well. I'm fairly certain he's going to build in Sevastopol. He kind of has to. He probably wants to rotate that fleet out somehow. He might not be able to. Um, but I don't, it's going to be... It's gonna be pretty hard to to take Vienna or Budapest. Um, I think that it it's gonna be more of a, and I think that he probably is still maintaining decent relationships with England. And 
I, I, I think it's more likely to see a steady creep against France here. Um, I, I would go, you know, I, I, I play, I play Italy, surprise, surprise, very fleet heavy. Um, I like how the Mediterranean is empty out and I would want to consult about an army as well. Yeah. It makes sense, but a rogue Italian army in Bohemia, Silesia, you need, you need to get beyond Russia's back lines if you want to break them at all. Just depends on who's he's going to, who he's going to ally with. That's all. Meanwhile, uh, let's go to the north and do Scandinavia and that part of England before we go to the rest. But, you know, R Russia's moves here are, are fairly predictable. We've just switched the bounce in Norway to the bounce in St. Petersburg for now. Uh, England moves the fleet to Finland. So England fetishized Finland, finally, uh, not Russia. Yeah. Uh, um, it would have been interesting if St. Peter. I'm a little surprised about Finland. not moving to Finland because having an army in Finland is awful for when if you're Russia <laughs> and there's an English army in Finland, that's not good. Uh, you would think that he would definitely prioritize that. Look, Ewoks don't like Finland, it's too cold. No, he hates Finland, he hates Finland. Uh, it, if, in terms of England, it's actually a really good defensive move in the, in the sense that if Russia had moved there, so England, it has to move to the North Atlantic to defend his line. He's still kind of in trouble there, a little bit lucky that France is a little more tactically timid uh, than some. Um, but the move to Finland, you know, had Russia moved there and he's moving to the North Atlantic, that would have been a problem. Norway would have been threatened unless he's willing to give up Belgium. So had Russia moved there, it would have been a good bounce. And even though Russia didn't, this prevents Russia from moving there. He only has one army to contest Finland. Um, Do you I'm think that's a better move than uh, Sweden, Norway, Norway, Finland? I think that that, yeah, no, I, I was about to say, I think that would have been better. I would have rather had the army in Finland. But he wanted to bounce, he wanted to bounce SGP. But I, I, I think it's that, I think it's more that he wants the army there so that to have a possible convoy line. I guess so. If he can uh, patch things up with Russia. Um, I think he, or at least to, you know, sometimes it's not even that you intend a convoy, but I like to have as many, I like to cover. Okay. Yeah, as many options as possible just to pin down my enemy's units because most people are more cautious than me, so they will scramble to cover everything, which kind of freezes us for me to kind of get into position. Um, so I, I, I see the logic there. I mean, I, I actually agree with you, Stitches, that I would have to put the army in. Like, maybe you don't want to go too aggressive against the uh, snuggly little Ewok right now doesn't seem too intent on you know I, I think that I think Ewok is a very defined philosophy of the north at this point I think that he just sincerely believes that Russia should not expand up there um, so you maybe you can rely on that to a certain extent or it could you know then again it could just be misdirection but yeah well, I mean I don't, they both like have an interest in not I mean, expanding that front it's completely contained now there's nothing he can do uh, neither, Russia, one, neither one of them right. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a good move. Like, you know, I, I might have, I would, it, it's, again, it's more of a, it's just, it's, it's, it's a brush stroke that's slightly misplaced, but the painting as a whole is still good. He need, I think he needed to move something to Finland in order to secure the North with the least amount of units. So a good defensive move there by Riaz. Uh, yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's talk about now, we'll just move to the other part of England, uh, Germany and France here. Uh, on the whole, the only thing that really happened was uh, 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 France took Holland, which I, Holland. Assume, which I assume was by agreement, obviously. But uh, I mean, Riaz has no disbands. I mean, I think that German. Might... No, he does. 
He didn't build. He, he only lost a disband. He lost. Uh, yeah, he lost. Uh, he lost. Oh, right. Yeah, he didn't build or. Yeah, but uh, in any case, uh, I think I think I think that Germany might have been hoping that that would be a bound, but their Germany can't be clear as a home center, so he might. Have, you know, if it bounces, great. If not, just take it. Uh, our campaign in England will be better this way. Um, so yeah, I mean, Real did what he could. He did what he could. He's still kind of a. Uh, He's still kind of putting putting together the pieces from his own hubristic, uh, his his own new moves here, but uh, he did what he could. Well, you kind of sound like Randy in American Idol. Uh, you know, you got your thing going. You did you did the best you could. I saw what you were doing. I really don't like <laughs> Sweden moving to Finland. I agree with EVR. EVR's move set was was good. He would have lost Belgium. Uh, had he done it, but Sweden moving to Baltic mm-hmm. at least would have been a key move down there. This might be an attempt to get Germany on side. Do you have a thought on on why he didn't do that? I I mean, I kind of disagree. I, I mean, look at the consequences of if if Russia decided, you know, Russia's getting two builds here. He could really so push those one armies build. into Scandinavia. Russia is getting one build. Two. Budapest and Vienna. And he lost he Serbia. Budapest and- oh, and he lost Serbia. Lost so Serbia. Well, in any case, even with one build, uh, he could he could easily have pushed pushed into Scandinavia. This was the only way to keep Scandinavia safe uh, with two units. Um, the move to Baltic, yeah, God, that fleet in Berlin is, is it such an eyesore. Um, Tactically, I could see, you know, protecting the north, but at the same time, Ewok hasn't shown any interest <laughs> in taking the north, so. But Ewok doesn't show interest in taking things until it becomes very, very, very easy to take them. If you give him enough temptation, he will, uh, you know, pick the fruit when it's perfectly ripe, you know, off the tree. When it's the least amount of effort, you don't even have to tug it. It just comes right off like that, you know. So I, I could go either way with that, uh, with that prediction. The, um, the Ewok move. Actually, like, EVR's. I'm sorry, the EVR's suggested move, if I'm not mistaken, is England supports Belgium. Because France has to cover Brest, uh-huh. North moves to Helgoland, Sweden moves to Baltic. Should that, um, if that had happened, England would be in a much better place. Well, he would have lost Belgium. E- oh, also no, no, said no. That England Belgium. would have support held Belgium. France would have dumped the fleet yeah. in the Brest. France. And then he can, yeah. Because either way, France is going to have two on, on the channel. I thought he said yeah, he, he would build or not. Convoy into Brest, which would have not been good. I thought that was your idea. No, 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 I wasn't. That's what EVR said. I don't know. I don't remember everything he said. But the, uh, I think he definitely, well, we can talk about France here, but I think, yeah, moving to Brest wasn't the best idea because you're ensured that it's open for build. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think you do actually need to worry about Russia a little bit here. If Russia gets into St. Petersburg and Finland while you're moving out of the Norwegian Sea, that's a disaster. You're going to lose all of Scandinavia pretty quickly or the low, or the, uh, the low countries. Um, no, I think I think I actually think England did what they needed to do here. I mean, it's the knock-on effect of their uh, flying too close to the sun, but I think they did what they needed to do. Uh, and, I, and I love the Baltic, so it, you know it's hard for me to say. But... France here uh, takes Holland, which Germany can't be upset with, and I assume uh, has to build a fleet in Brest. Because you can look at the English move. If they didn't move to 
oppressed and supported Belgium, um, then France would still have two fleets, but if we wanted to build another one, it would have to build it in Marseille, which would be an, an extra season behind. Uh, now it can build right in Brest. Super dangerous for England here if France builds in Brest, right? Because yep. Mid-Atlantic, England has, keep Belgium or keep the channel? Mid-Atlantic keeps the channel yeah. supported England by Brest. Already, England already dodged a bullet here because if, you know, France, if I had been, if, if, if it was me with my p particular aesthetic, I probably knowing that Belgium would be, you know, I mean, you know, my, my estimation is that Riaz is a player who, and this isn't, this isn't a, a critique. This is actually, a, some people use this to misdirect and to take people by surprise, but Riaz is someone who will, it will spam a move in the sense that he will do the same move a few times in a row. I would have been pretty confident that Belgium would be supported by the North Sea, especially since the North Sea can't be cut. I would have defended with Picardy and moved to the Irish Sea and maybe even moved Burgundy to Gascony. And then, then England would be in real trouble here. So he kind of dodged a bullet um, in a sense. And, and well, it's not a, a bullet, uh, you know, you are predicting the moves of someone that you know to some extent. So good on him, but yeah, fleet and breast now. You know, if, if I was if I was France, I'd actually give him malicious. I, th I think that England will probably self balance in the IRC because he has no other way of covering all three of those crucial tiles. I would give him a malicious support into the IRC and just try to slip straight into the English Channel. Personally, um, yep. that'd be awesome. Yeah, that's that's what that's what I would do. Uh, I will say. Uh, Italy is probably just salivating over the situation. I mean, if I was Italy, I would be. He's probably just salivating over this situation. <laughs> uh, I think that we might see Italy in the Mid-Atlantic at some point. Uh, not like next turn, but once or if France and England, which they probably will, be become completely put Italy in there. Um, I really wouldn't be... be all that surprise if that was the long-term outcome of the situation. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Italy supports Norwegian to Mid-Atlantic. Because if Italy, I mean, you know, Italy has an interest now I, in keeping the West on balance. I would rather be there myself. <laughs> there is no I think that taking the Mid-Atlantic as Italy might be my favorite feeling in this entire game well i was thinking about it myself and i'm like if you're any power in the game mid-atlantic except for maybe austria mid-atlantic is just the best place to be i don't know it's yeah. just so game changing for every power it is except for austria but yeah <laughs> i mean if you are there is austria <laughs> it's, a, it's pretty amazing you're like, how the hell did I get here? Yeah, well, it's also because Iberia, I think, is actually the toughest corner to crack in the game. Uh, it's really a fortress, and the Mid-Atlantic is the key to that fortress. You know, it's kind of a, you know, if you get in there as Italy, it's almost like you've rolled the Trojan horse in through the walls at that, that point. Um, so great situation for Italy, uh, as long as France and England can't work it out. Um Thing was in trouble too. Well, suddenly the East. What a was, mess! Yeah, I mean, I think uh, we're still going to be having each corner play in the corners, and Italy is mad. Max is doing a great job of having an influence in both both theaters. I think that uh, one of the uh, one of the, I, I think that we're starting to see also again a, a, a cascade of effects from the fact that Turkey did put Russia into Serbia first before himself, which means that Turkey will not reach a front where he, you know, he will not reach the front and cannot affect 
the Western theater or Germany, which means that Turkey can only turn against Russia or Italy, which is pretty, it's funny how just a small detail like that can have such a, you know, uh, effect. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. And what did you guys think of Germany? Just out of curiosity. I well, you know, we had. What four, did you think was going to happen here? Zero players predicted this move set for Germany when we we thought yesterday, but I'm fine with him. Mm -hmm. I I would have liked to have kept Holland, but I understand why he let France move there, even though he couldn't get a bill. Well, I did predict Munich to Berlin. I just figured it'd be with support. Um, getting Austria to bounce is kind of a bonus. It was. I mean, there's no point in keeping Holland because he can't build, though. It's that it's more if he wants to fight England, it's more useful to give that build to uh, France. In fact, that's just that's great alliance play. There's hoarding hoarding centers when you can't build is amateur hour. Like, why would you do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no, no I agree. Can... I mean, I, I'm saying, yeah, no, yeah. I, I agree. But like what I think the move was necessary because we, we didn't know what England was going to do. And it's also, Good. it takes a build away from England. It gives a build to France, mm -hmm. critical build, solidifies an alliance mm -hmm. between France and Germany. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, you know Germany's going to get three eventually. Kind of think England should have given Germany Berlin. If that was the cost of getting Germany back on side, I would have done it. Also, you know, if you had done that, then Germany would have armies in Kiel and Berlin. He can't even build a fleet. All he can build is an army in Munich, which is more threatening to France. I think he's. I know that would give you a disband. I think he's correctly analyzed that whatever he's done to Dave by that sneak move into Berlin, if that was a sneak move has irrevocably damaged the relationship. I disagree. I disagree. For me, when I'm in a position, I mean, again, this is, you know, I've actually re uh, I've been reading something lately that they distinguish between uh, instinctual empathy and, uh, you know, analytic or accurate empathy. So this might be my instinctual empathy where I'm just projecting myself onto Dave, which could be a mistake. But for me, if I'm down to two centers, all I want, I want my home centers back and I want to build. Anyone who will give me that gift is the person I'm going to side with. On top of that, again, like I said, the build would be in Munich. Um, Germany would have three armies. Denmark is not under threat. You could even disband that uh, Berlin fleet. You're still safe from Germany. Uh, I think that would have been the right move there. Personally, I know that's a bit of it's a bit radical, but that's what I would have done. What about supporting Berlin and the Kiel? Uh, who doing? Uh, oh, England. I, I mean, he would have had two units together. It'd be way easier to defend in Berlin. That's true. That would have been better because Kiel's a much more valuable tile with your fleet because you can even evacuate to Helgeland Bight in the spring and put a. Ugh, that would have been a lot better. Yep. I was like, that fleet is way, way more useful than Baltic or Kiel. Yeah, that's kind of odd that he didn't do that. And it's like, I know the army's fairly useless there, but... No, yeah, that would have been a better move, you're right. But I still would have, I still would have, uh, I would have put Germany back on, on their feet here with three armies. Um, unless Germany is as crazy as he is and just waves the bill. <laughs> Because England's got four fronts. He's got the, the Germany, the Lowlands, the Atlantic, and Scandinavia. And I think that would have consolidated the Lowlands and the German front. Yeah, he yeah. needs to do something. Like, that would have been the kind of radical gesture you need to do when you don't have a single friend. You need to make one. You need to – and also, like, taking that sacrifice, doing this, you know, that's – sacrifice is what really demonstrates friendship. Um but 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 on the but yeah, if he was going to continue to kind of uh, gunboat his way through this, I agree he should have supported Berlin to kill. I haven't seen that. Hey, uh, 
I am going to absent myself for about a minute to two. Why don't you start with grades? <laughs> Ooh. But without an ed reaction, is it grades? <laughs> Should we just talk about Pez some more? <laughs> so, oh my goodness. What's the worst thing Pez ever did to you? You know? <laughs> oh. You know, it's funny. Game I, out of game. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. let's not let's not even go to in the out of game stuff that's gonna get a little emotional. um yeah <laughs> i still can't believe that he villainizes me to this day uh for attacking him when he not only demands italy to convoy his army to greece but then turkey supported him to greece and they both tried to tell me and put in the a their aars that it was an accident <laughs> <laughs> Turkey accidentally supported him to Greece. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! <sighs> um. Well, sure. Well, I guess we can like slowly start with grades. You want to start with Turkey? Sure. Um. I'm gonna give it a B. Uh, I think he's got good uh working dynamics with Italy going on. Uh, he got a build. Uh, Moves that solid. I just don't like that Ankara move. It really limits his option and shows his hand. Yeah. Uh, so it's a B for me. Uh, I'm trying. He loses an entire turn of advantage, but <sighs> for the most part, he's in a good cool. spot. I really want to see the Kraken. I do. I do like uh, the the Kraken. It's so rare and. Uh, it's definitely not a viable strategy in it if as an early game alliance uh, because you are going to get in each other's way and if either of you guys has any kind of solo ambitions it's impossible um, as a late game alliance though it takes people by surprise and it can be very effective and you know the temptation of Iberia is there, um, and it gives Italy the space to go for it. Um, but how do I? And Turkey Sorry. with no fleets makes it a lot easier for him to go army up to the middle or up through Russia. Yeah, but then again, if he had held on Kara, he'd be in a better position to do that. Uh, Way better position. But uh, how do I value this? So I love. I love Serbia supporting Italy in, which gives Italy more room, more confidence in him. But I hate the move to Constantinople and the move to Bulgaria is obvious. It has to be a C for me. It all it all evens out. It all <laughs> evens out. Yeah. What do you think, Ed? Turkey's grade? Uh, what, did not you, back yet. what did superstition give him? I gave him a B. I thought tactically it's sound. He's got good coordination with his neighbors. I just don't get Ankara move. It, and then it, it's going to give him a whole, whole, whole season behind mm -hmm. for his uh, initiative. Uh, I, I give him an A minus. Italy? Wait, what? why? Why does he give him an A minus? You, do you, you like the move to Constantinople, huh? I, I'm not against it at all. Uh, I I think it preserves his options. I think Turkey is doing well, but like, what do I know? Literally one year ago, I predicted Austria to win the game. <laughs> Austria is eliminated. That prediction can never come true. I just figured you were speaking with your heart there uh, at the time. I didn't want to say England. Uh, that might have not been the best prediction either. Uh, okay, well, we can move on. You're wrong, but fine. Italy. I give Italy an A. Um, an army in Trieste is good. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got good cooperation with France and Turkey, it seems. Uh, he got Turkish support. The island's clear. He's got a build. Very good. Solid A. Yeah, very strong A for me. Um, 
it would be like an A plus 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 for Ed, but um. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a good strong A for me. Higher than A, sorry. It's like a long paragraph at the end of the paper, uh, kind of uh, talking about uh, how you know maybe you should get this published. Um, it's really good. I mean, again, the you know when I look at this, it's just such a astounding reversal in fortunes in terms of your naval dominance of your area of the map right i mean what i see is the mediterranean filling up with green triangles uh which is exactly where riaz was not too long ago um and and you know whether he decides to go army rome fleet rome fleet naples there's no bad answer no there's not there's no bad answer so whatever your neighbors demand of you someone will be grateful and you will still be in a good position um anytime you... italy anytime italy can get to six it's good mm -hmm. and yeah, he's doing very well i think it's a solid a it's not an a plus but it could be the reason is i don't know who has tanj on side But even if he didn't have Tanja on side, I'm not sure he could have done anything differently. Oh, that know. sounds like uh, future grading for next season. Yeah. <laughs> grading this so, season. But it's the I'm, same problem I have with Russia. I give Russia an A for the moves, but yeah. but I'm not at all sure that Russia is not the target of the Kraken next. It should be. Yeah, it should be. He's he's uh, the co-leader of the board now. He's at eight. He's a better position than England. Um, he's got a neutral position with England, too. He is clearly has... <laughs> how Ewok is the position. Uh, the board unites against England. I have a feeling that Ewok had a strong hand in uniting the board against England, and you know, he uh, he kind of sits in the back of the crusade against England. Like, go on, men, charge. I'll be back here. <laughs> you know? um, it kind of reminds, I was reading this book not too long ago, uh, The Voyage, I think it's called The Voyage of Shackleton, who's like a famous British explorer. And they really, they go on, on, on and on about his, Shackleton's amazing heroism and leadership qualities. There's these section, all these sections where all his men are rowing, you know, their, their, their ship gets stuck in Antarctic ice. They have to row, I don't know how many hundreds of miles to the nearest island. And Shackleton's presented as the uh, hero of the story, but, you know, they all, there's these passages, you know, and Shackleton stands in the back of the boat and said, row on men, row, you know. <laughs> well, kind I'm of a huge Shackleton fan, although not a great explorer, <laughs> but a, a superior survivor. Uh, right, yeah, he, he commanded his men to row on very heroically, much like Ewok, another superior survivor. <laughs> but I, I'm, what would you guys have thought if the move set was exactly the same, except Romania goes to Black Galicia to Romania? Uh, I wouldn't I, like it because what if Tyrol? held vienna yeah i mean sure that would have shown an incredible anticipation you know you're guaranteeing that the ottomans turn against you um well wouldn't pez be grateful i think well apparently no one i think that I mean, you know a, a one a stab like that why don't you just do trieste to serbia supported with budapest and then move that way I, yeah, I think that, uh, you know, a, a, a power with a desperate power with one center left for a diplomat as capable of, as Ewok should be free money laying on the ground. And I think this shows that, uh, that Pez isn't desperate. Yeah, Pez, Pez is not, he doesn't have the humility, the shamelessness the will to live to be a janissary i think pez would rather watch uh 
Italy versus England in the you know Euro Cup finals and stop caring. Um, well, I, I think that Ewok, I'm not writing off Russia uh, no, of to, course to, lo- to lose to the IT. Oh, that, I think there's a oh, lot that. of diplomatic leverage that Ewok can point out about the dangers of empowering Italy, which are apparent to everybody right now. But he has eight. I mean, I don't, I don't, don't get me wrong. Yeah, I mean, I think it oh, was he has right. seven. Oh, right. Yes, seven. Yeah, I miscounted again. But, I mean, I don't doubt that Russia is a bigger threat to win the game than Italy is, in my opinion. But on the other hand, you know, in typical Ewok fashion, he never really puts himself in a position of vulnerability. He has a pretty good defensive line up there. I, even if Italy and, and Turkey move against him, it's not, it's not going to be an easy campaign. And I'm Almost a hundred percent certain he's going to build in Sevastopol. What does he build? Two two fleets or does, uh, a southern fleet or an army? Uh, I think an army. Um, the I fleet's agree, tempting. But... The fleet's tempting because you can reassert your dominance over the Black Sea. But then, what do you do with your second fleet after that? Uh, what do you do with your second fleet after that? You know. The army, the army is more versatile. Uh, what you want to try to do is rotate the army into Romania if you can. It's just hard to figure out where to put your fleet. Uh, but I don't think I don't think he's going to go two fleets. I think he'll go an army, and then he no. can kind of explain it away as a defensive move or something. Whereas a fleet is very clearly a, a move against Turkey. So Russia is definitely an army power, especially if you're playing defensively, and that's what he likes to do. Um, He's going to leverage as much diplomacy as he can to ensure other people fight. Uh, I think that's the whole purpose of him evacuating to that line is to give a, a bigger border to Turkey and Italy. Uh, he's wanting yeah. them to fight. He's not going to want to stab first. So your grade of Russia is what? Uh, he got build and he's got a neutral border with England. Oh, sorry, you go first. <laughs> Oh, you want me to go first? I give him an A. I mean, he did everything right. There's, there's nothing wrong with his moves. He got his builds. You know, I would have been tempted to Janissary. Uh, Austria-Hungary, I have a feeling like Pez isn't interested in doing that and will probably still try to be the patriarch, even with his one army, um, and still treat you like you're his loser son. Um so maybe not. Uh, no, he did very well. He even he, he's in the position where even if Italy and Turkey turn against him, he can hold the line to some extent. England probably would be quite grateful to know that he's not moving up there, um, and he hasn't shown his cards by moving against Turkey or attempting to. Um, yeah, it's got to be an A. He did very well. Definitely an A for me. He got a yeah, neutral border with England. Uh, got both Italy and Turkey a build with the plan. Uh, yeah. So they're both happy. Uh, he held in Romania, so he's not in a stabbing position. He's got a uh, defensive line. So that influences builds, hopefully, in his favor. You know, so, and sometimes it's not even – a matter of getting Italy and Turkey necessary to fight right away, but sometimes it's just a natural occurrence. Sometimes, sometimes just getting people to hesitate for a turn when they have the advantage is all you need, right? If he can use diplomacy and his neutral position just to get them to to wait just a little bit while he consolidates his position just a little more, uh, maybe can rotate that fleet out, then that puts them. An, an advantage that is that belies uh, the kind of subtle and small, you know, nature of his kind of rotations. Um, yeah, I think I think he did really well. I think he's his past few turns have been incredible by him, and I have a feeling that he's doing a lot of diplomatic work too. It also allows him to be victim. So if they attack him first, he's exactly. easier to pull one on side as not the aggressor. Exactly. Um, yeah, that's a good yeah. point. 
if he can hold as long as he can, it's really natural for Turkey and Italy to want to fight eventually if they're not making any growth. So there's a lot of stuff he can do. I think it's just a good A all over. Uh, I yeah. give him a B plus. I, I really think uh, as opposed to every other turn, this was the turn he should have moved to Finland. Uh, so uh, for the South, obviously, I think he did. He, he played well. The North, I think, could could have been one one better, but that's fine. All right, Germany's great. This is the one turn where moving to Finland didn't matter. <laughs> what are you talking right. about? God, Ed. Okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, Germany, Germany, England's more out like of position than my border. before, at least on a major point. <laughs> yeah, this is the one turn where it didn't matter. Actually, it probably was better to let England put. I mean, a fleet in Finland isn't that all that valuable. So, um, yeah. Look, this is why I'm worried about it. Now England gives Berlin to Germany, Berlin to Baltic, Baltic cuts Slovenia. Oh, that's true. England in St. Petersburg in 06. That's true. He, he offsets the Berlin loss with St. Petersburg, gets back on side with Germany. Yeah, but if he builds in Sevastopol and he sees that coming, he just moves to Moscow. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I that's going to be hard it. if there's an ID. There's a lot to worry about. Well, if everyone's against him, he's it's not you can't win anyway. So I think he's got to be moved to Finland. Someone. That problem would not exist in 06 for him. That's actually not a bad point. I hadn't seen that. That's a, yeah, but yeah. if he went to Finland, if he actually succeeded, then Livonia is a much more powerful pivot point. Yeah. Than St. Petersburg, he'd be locked in the north for the most part. It's just not as flexible. Yeah, it's. It's definitely rigid and safer, but yeah. he he would rather lose St. Petersburg than lose his flexibility to pivot either direction. I and he has proven that he's willing to give it up. I still yeah. give I still give him an A, but I actually see what you're saying there, Ed. And I actually don't think that is impossible. The the sociological probabilities are low because when you have uh, Hawaiian shirt bros as close as England and France and things go wrong, the idea that that pressure on England is going to go away and England's going to have the space to go against Russia seems unlikely. Who knows? Um, I did see Philip earlier today having a few drinks with a couple ladies, so maybe he's, he'll be feeling generous. I don't know. All right. Uh, France is great. Well, we didn't do Germany's grade. I give Germany an A. Germany's A, yeah. He, yeah. he saw an extra uh, bounce with Austria that I didn't see. I thought Austria would be too preoccupied with himself. Yeah. So that's good Good diplomacy there. Especially if somebody actually helped you die. <laughs> yeah, I mean, or it could be just was worried that Austria was going to try to slip uh, but either way, it's good prediction or good diplomacy. So, yeah, he gets an A. He did what he had to do. I like that he was generous with France when he couldn't build. I mean, at a game of this level, that's obvious. But you'd be surprised how many annoying people want to keep dots when they can't build. It drives me nuts. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, he gets an A. I mean, what? there's nothing wrong with what he did. He did what he had to do. Good job. I mean, I think he could have gotten to this result any number of ways. It's a tad unusual. Yeah, but he, he got there. I mean, okay, give me credit, he's alive. He's alive and he has two units. I never, you know, I did not think in Austria and Austria, and he's not the first to be eliminated. So he gets a, he gets a, a second participation trophy. <laughs> uh, guaranteed six. Yeah. Uh, France, grade him harshly for not out leveling Riaz and moving to the Irish. Covering breast with uh, Picardy. Yeah, I think it was a given that Belgium wasn't going to be taken. Yeah. So it was a, it was definitely an option to get a Raider. You have uh, you have a, a you know you do. 
I mean, it's tough because if you do go to the Irish Sea, though, you put yourself a little bit out of position with respect to Italy. I wouldn't complete, especially after Italy made it clear the new England stab was coming and didn't tell France about it in the public chat. Um, that would kind of... Uh, well, def- England had held Belgium and he was in Brest and Mid-Atlantic. It wouldn't matter that much either. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm going to give him a B plus. I think that, you know, he, he took Holland. His diplomacy is good. Um, his diplomacy is good. He's getting a build. So that's yep. great. Uh, breast is clear. That might have been some clever diplomacy, duplicity from France. Um, the reason he doesn't get an A is because I think that this a, a daring move would have been really good for him. He didn't really need to be holding uh, that line against uh, the German front right now. Um, so he is kind of a missed opportunity, but also. Also, he's, he's still getting that bill. He still has England in a bind. He might be trying to keep the door open with England, which wouldn't happen if he was threatening the island. But I love threatening the island. <laughs> it's hard for me to be too happy with it. Uh, I'm a little bit of an island hater. Uh, yeah, I'll give him a B plus. I'll give him a B plus. Yep. It's definitely a B for me. I like it. Definitely a B for me. I like it. Well, it's, if you like it, what more could he have done? Good. You got Oh, I, I would have loved to be an Irish right now. Yeah. I think just tapping Belgium and tapping Holland, seeing what you can get, would have been plenty. You could easily cover breasts I, and slide into the Irish. I wouldn't even have tapped Belgium. I would have – well, you, you guys know. I want to tap yeah. it because of England. Besides that Belgium is there, moves back to Holland. So I think I think tapping it with Burgundy was definitely a- yes, but and this is again you know I have my fetish tiles Gascony is probably you know one of the hottest ones of those fetish <laughs> tiles, uh, but I would have I would have loved to see IRC and moving the <laughs> moving that army back to Gascony um, as soon as you get that convoy line into. England, even if it's not successful, it causes such a scramble and they have to use so many units to cover everything. Um, Just build an army in Brest. That's true. Yeah, you could build. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah I hadn't seen that. But but then again, uh, it's hard. It would, it would have been hard to know a certainty that you were going to get a build, but that would have been a good guess too. You're right. Berg, yeah. Either way, but I, I agree with you. I, I think it's, if, for me, it's a B plus for you to be. I think we agree, though. Yeah, I, I'm not good with the pluses and minuses, so yeah. <laughs> I, I, <give> it, <laughs> I try to get I, rounded. I think, rounded it's a sol- I think it's a solid A. Uh, I think I've rated every player uh, close to that. It's a solid A. I would not give up my position to the Italians. I mean, suddenly France has become Italy right now with between England and uh, and Italy. And I love that he can build a fleet in Brest and dictate. Uh, it's just proving that France is so hard to crack that I'm still against that convoy England made to Norway before. Uh, you know, why make it harder on yourself when you have the toughest country defensively? And now France got one of the disbands back from the stab, got an ally back, got two allies back with Italy and Germany. Uh, just a fantastic year for France, and uh, overall the year for oh. me is an A plus, and this season is an A. Well, yeah, the the convoy to Norway was last season where we gave him an F. Uh, right, that, but I'm yeah, I'm just you know pointing pointing it out. Uh, just sort of like I want to change my grade. I want to change my grade. I'm gonna change my grade to an A. Just because, um, what? Because I really like that fleet in Spain. It does it definitely protects the Mediterranean a little bit better. I think I'm a little stab happy against uh, England right now. <laughs> Philip has Philip has already Francis learned Kennedy. the dangers of overcommitting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Well, then again, if he had, you know, he had a clear line of attack against England. The problem with England is the problem with England is that England goes from a, a, a pretty not easy elimination, but a doable elimination in 1903 to a just horrible headache of an elimination in 1905, right? Mm. You know, he, you have to be very confident in that EF if you're going to go forward. Uh, so, yeah, you could say that he learned about overextending. You could also say maybe you learned about giving up on convoy lines in England when you have them. And once again, I mean, well, he could still get in there, but you want to, you know, you want to take every opportunity you can. Um, and yeah, Italy is a threat uh, and they could even move an army against you, but there is a Mexican standoff going on in the Balkans right now. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you, that fleet is, it's just a single fleet in North Africa. I mean, again, one, I really love Italy's game here in the sense that, you know, he was affecting the East with his one fleet in the East. Now he's affecting the West with his one fleet in the West. Anytime you can just do so much with one unit, you're really doing well. Um, but I think I think France could have could have afforded to be a little more daring here. Um, but I still give him a B plus, right? You know, I'd say it's like an eighty eight point five, right? You know, maybe. Uh, that. So yeah. Okay, uh, <laughs> England's great. I hate the bouncing breast. You knew it was going to be covered. Let it go. Mm -hmm. um, I think the fleet would have been better in Kiel. Yeah, he could have even covered Holland and 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 support and uh, protected Belgium. Yeah, but that's assuming he knew what the moves were going to be. Well, I think that Philip. My impression, I think, I mean, you know, he has a better read on France than me. Philip seems like, uh, I mean, just all I have is the moves to go on. He seems like a very good diplomat and not the most creative tactician and a little bit slow to move out. Uh, so I don't think, I think I could have predicted that he would cover Brest personally. And even if he's not, it's such a, it's such a good thing if he does, because then if he does get a build, he can't build a second fleet in Brest. So I don't think there's any reason to go for it. No. Uh, unless then again, Philip could have like tricked him into thinking he might get it. Uh, you know, maybe like sent some information through someone else to make England think that he was going to leave it uncovered, um, which would have been a great job on his part. But I agree with stitches. Uh, there's really very little reason to put here. Um, that's bad. Um, the that would free up north to either bounce Holland, move into hell. Exactly. Something. Yeah. 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 You could have, you could have really uh, done more with those units. Um, I do like the move to Finland. That's where me and Ed disagree. Move to North Atlantic, absolutely necessary. So he gets a C minus. Oh, and not only that, but as Stitches pointed out, it would have been better to support Berlin and Tequila because that's a better place for his fleet too. So yeah, it's definitely a C minus. He's flirting with Berlin the D, but you know, he came to class. The only reason I can think of is he didn't is because of my little attack St. Petersburg plan. Uh, that he's got no six, but That's uh, I think he should have moved Berlin to Kiel. I wouldn't, if he was going to move Berlin to Kiel, I think I would have moved Belgium to Holland uh, with North Sea support and have a better line there. But it's very difficult to know what those moves were going to be. That's why we had that special tactical discussion on uh, the last pod about, about that. So I, I'm going to give him a C. I believe these are average moves, and he's capable of much more. I agree. How I give him a C as well. Yeah, for me, it's a it's a C minus, but it's like 
I just like him and he came to class every day and participates a little bit. So he almost, <laughs> gets, he almost gets a D for me, almost. <laughs> okay. Uh, England, no disbands. France gets a build. Uh, do we all agree it's fleet breast? Yeah. Uh, I think army sev. I think Han says army sev. Stitches? Army, army sev, yeah. He's an army guy. And that's the best place to put it. Uh, Turkey's build. I think he'll build Fleet Smyrna. Although I think I might build Fleet Ankara. Why did he move to Constantinople? What did that's I? Awful. Give him? God, actually, he gets a D. That's so bad <laughs> for, for Ankara. It's just no, but it, it really, it's really because it's 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 just awful. In, information is is like keeping information to yourself is I think one of the most important aspects of this game. And that goes for both explicit communication and what you communicate through your builds and moves. And he has just given up so much by not keeping Constantinople open. I actually think yeah. he might even build another army. Do you think he's going to build an army? Yeah. Predict what you think he's going to build. I kind of do, actually. <laughs> I think he's going to build an army. I think he's going to build an army, and it doesn't really matter where it is. Yeah. I know that's not easy, but... No, why army would, he would be hilarious. Then it, then it might be the move to Armenia, but I don't think it'll Armenia. be Armenia. I give that a 1% chance. Uh, I would do uh, Fleet Smyrna because even if he wants to go into Russia, he could still move to Constantinople. Okay. Um, I predict Turkey will go against Italy, not Russia, but I think he is a really difficult choice uh, because I think the move to Ankara was not a stab, but maybe it was because of what all y'all pointed out about how defensive he's been. Finally, Italy's build. Uh, I am 100% building fleet Naples and I know it doesn't add up, but I might be susceptible to uh, army Rome. This one's tough for the reasons I already covered where actually any, any possible build besides army Naples would be good. Um, army Naples is the only one that doesn't make sense. Right. And it really depends on the diplomatic situation. Uh, so it's very hard to predict. Um, you know, I don't want Mad Max sending me messages and knocking on my door, knocking on my window, peeking in, like telling me I'm wrong. So it's a tough one. Fleet Maybe Naples. Wave. Maybe Italy waves. Oh, Italy don't wave, please. I can't deal with another one. Um, he won't. He won't. He's too angry to wave. He's like me. Uh, I'm just going with Fleet Naples because it gives them the most flexibility and it seems the most likely, but I really wouldn't be surprised by Army or Fleet Rome. I can see the practicality of Fleet Naples. For some reason, I really want to see Army Rome. I think that Adriatic is going to be a lot less useful soon. And if he's really worried about Greece, I mean, Greece is going to be gone regardless. Turkey's going to have four units on it. So... If you can't trust Turkey, then yeah, you're going to be down a unit anyway. Boy, what? Until you mentioned the Adriatic, which I didn't think about, I think now Army Rome is starting to make a lot of sense. Like I said, they all have their – it's really tough because it's, it's – this is the amazing thing. This is why I gave him a very strong A because he can do pretty much anything and he's at a strategic advantage and someone will be happy with what he does. You know, he can be like, oh, yes – even though I don't want to do X because you ask for X, I will give you this beautiful gift and he's still in a great position. So every really, unit he has is powerful in multiple directions. Yeah. yeah it's he, amazing. It's really great. It was just an amazing turnaround for him. Um, Think about his army Venice being in Tyrolia and Rome going into Venice and then yeah. working with or against England in North Africa and, uh, and in uh, the German heartland. That I don't know. I if it was me, I the thing about Italy is like you're in search of a corner. So for me, it, it's 1905. If I can 
if I can take Iberia, I know that I am in position to survive and maybe win. So this is where I start plotting against Iberia personally. I don't really want to get entangled in Munich really where there's absolutely, Munich is, you know, if you're Italy and you're taking Munich, that's like a 1909 <laughs> take, you know. Uh, 1901, just for that spare oh, bill. Okay, but you're, you're all for oh, that. 1901. Yeah, no, why, we're why do you get on <laughs> Philip? Why do you get on Philip for keeping his position in the, in the West? Like why? Like if you think Italy is going to build a fleet to go to Iberia, why should Philip then press an attack against England? Well, because we're different, Ed. Like the uh, for me, this is Philip's problem the whole time. Like sometimes there's a risk, but if you grab enough fast enough, you can turn around. You know, you the the best uh, the best way to deal with your vulnerability is to become strong. You know. Um, but yeah, I would be plotting. You know, I, I that's why I said I, I I didn't give Philip a bad grade. I gave him an eighty eight point five. You know, um, I give him eighty eight point five. And also, like we said, there is a Mexican standoff out there. I'm not sure. You know, Italy. I would be eyeing Iberia. It doesn't necessarily mean I would feel the freedom to go to Iberia. Um, and Philip, I think, you know, he is a good diplomat. I think he probably is talking to someone out there. Um, he did. Uh, consort with uh, Pez the Leper a lot, which might have kind of uh, damaged his credibility <laughs> to some point, but uh, uh, but yeah, let's let's move on to Austria. So what do you guys think he'll this plan? I think, <laughs> I, I, think uh, I, I did think that on army. purpose. I do want to cover Austria. I do uh, want to cover Austria. <laughs> I'm going to give him an plan. F with five minuses for the little crown in Vienna. I know. <laughs> I hate I kind of don't like cutesy stuff. And also it's, it's just Pez, like, stick your guns, man. You're not a cutesy guy. Uh, <laughs> you should do what you did to me in our final conversation where right before I called you narcissist, your last message to me was, uh, I believe it was something along the lines of, this is a resentment that will ask, last for many, many games. <laughs> <laughs> like threatening, telling me he will not, you know, that, uh, that, that, It'll be many games before he doesn't target me. Um, All right. And I put an exclamation point at the end of the quintuple minuses on the F. F's all around for yeah. Pez. We ask this question at the end of every year. Who will win the Nexus Season 6 Finals? It's particularly appropriate halfway through with no obvious answer. Mm, it's true. How things have changed in one I'm year. liking Italy more and more. It's it's really tough between Italy or Russia to me right now. So even if Italy isn't in a winning position, he's in a king making position. That's true. So whatever way he pivots, he's helping the other side. <laughs> it's really tough for me. I think that Russia is the most probable winner, but Italy has the highest upside given his position. Uh, I'm still going to go with Russia, but Italy is very close behind him. Very, very close behind him. And sometimes being right behind, you know, to, to use a, a Pez-esque cycling metaphor, right? Sometimes being right behind the leader using the kind of, what do they call it? The draft of his wind breaking ability or whatever is, is where you want to be for the final sprint. So you know, actually, I'm going to go with my heart and go with you, Stitches. I, I'm going to say Italy, even though I think Russia is maybe more probable. That's how I feel, too. Yeah. Okay, I, I actually think uh, uh, this is not a Pez answer. This is not with my heart. This is with my brain. And maybe it's Austria? Says why I don't have the best <laughs> results. But I think if, if I had to pick a player on this map, having seen the series of moves, I would pick Turkey. I think Turkey is in the best chance to win, especially if he builds fleet on Kara. Here's why. If he takes the black or Romania, Russia's cracked. Italy moves to secure Iberia, like Han thinks, because he's very, very comfortable. Those armies are going to be wonderfully useful to him. I just love the Turkish uh, position. 
And I think Turkey can do well in this game. I think he's got a lot of credibility with Italy. I think he's got a lot of credibility with Russia. And I think he's got a lot of ability to grow. It'd be a lot easier to crack Russia with uh, uh, Army and Kara. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I think uh, I think we've shown that uh, Ed picking you to win is the kiss of death. So <laughs> I'm sorry, it is, you're lost, Turkey. I'm it, sorry. Is the cur- it is the curse of Ed, but I actually wouldn't discount England either. Yeah. We uh, saw what happened in England. Yeah, <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't discount England either, just because it's such a roller coaster ride with him and uh germany's gonna flip any way he can so germany's gonna flip any way he can and if there's one thing i learned about riaz is that uh he does best when his back's against the wall and he's fucking up and when he's doing well he gets overconfident and uh shoots himself in the foot so you know maybe uh maybe uh facing the firing squad his uh his lust for life will be rekindled I just don't think Russia can win. Uh, I think it's unlikely, but it's possible. Uh, so w- we shall see. Okay, gentlemen, uh, thanks for the. Uh, I-, I thought this was a really good podcast uh, compared to our normal crap. Uh, this one was pretty good. I disagree because I had a uh, metaphor about cannibalistic ponies last last podcast, and uh, that was amazing. Yeah, I really, I, I don't know where that, where in my unconscious that came from, but I think that wouldn't put it on top for me, so. Well, uh, I, I preferred the Freud analogy about the guy <laughs> uh, from two seasons ago, uh, yeah. but uh, you got points off last podcast for saying Riku. Uh, that just, that's never going to fly with me. Are you and, supposed to say it in, in American? How do you say it? Recoup. <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh god like i okay. will recoup the english language from your guerrilla warfare against it <laughs> oh my god okay sorry i'll try to like drink some more and bang my head against a brick wall a few times so i can be more texan it's okay That's you got 180 next. points higher on your verbal score than i did uh <laughs> so you know yeah, like 20 more all right. So, uh, as I say, I'm frequently wrong, but never in doubt. Uh, and thanks again to diplomacybriefing.com for sponsoring us. Don't forget them. Uh, they're not going to ask you for any money, and it's a great resource. And uh, they're going to pay my kids tuition the more I plug them. Uh, I'm just kidding. They don't earn any actual money, and I'm happy to report my daughter got a full scholarship to college. So, that's one less headache. Oh, really? Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you very much. All right. Gentlemen, good night. Good night.